This week, I want to share my simple under $10 solution to getting power back to my truck camper. Figuring out your power supply is both an important, fun, and challenging part of a DIY truck camper build. So for me, I had decided to purchase a portable battery. So I have a Jackery 1000, which has been working fantastic. I really, really like it. But originally when I purchased the Jackery Explorer, my plan had been to charge it while I drove. And I was gonna use the outlet in my Toyota Tacoma truck bed. So there's an outlet here and you can plug a normal standard wall charging plug into it. And I was gonna use that, but I had a problem with that. So when the truck is idling, that outlet will give out 400 watts. But when the truck is driving, it only gives out 100 watts. And the Jackery Explorer, while it's charging, draws about 150 watts. So unfortunately, I couldn't charge it while I was driving, only if I was idling. And I really didn't want to sit there and idle just to charge my portable battery. So on my first road trip, when I headed up to Alaska, I ended up just having to take that portable battery into the front seat, plug it into the car 12 volt charger, and let it charge in the passenger seat. That worked okay when I didn't have a passenger, but got a little cozy and cramped when I had someone else in the car. So for my second road trip, I was looking for a simple solution to fix the problem, and I found one. I got a 12 volt extension cord and ran it from the front of the truck to the back. So it's plugged into the 12 volt charge in the front seat, and then there's an area in the door well of the passenger seat that we were able to thread the cord through. Unfortunately, the ends of the extension cord were a little bit too big to fit through that area in the door well. And so we did have to cut the wire and then solder things back together. And you can see in the video that we have a slightly different extension cord that we're soldering to the one that I bought off Amazon. We'd gotten a 13 foot long extension cord and it was a little bit short. So adding this little bit of extra length after soldering things together made a big difference in how easily things fit. And then after getting the cord through the door well, we zip tied it to the bottom of the truck and started working our way back to the truck bed itself. I took out the plastic piece that originally goes here and put in a little wood modifier to hold it in place, allow the cord to go through. And the Jacker Explorer can plug right into that and charge while I drive, which has been a big improvement from carrying it back and forth to the front seat. Now, the Jackery Explorer charges the slowest on the 12 volt outlet, so I think it takes like 14 hours to fully charge it. So if I don't have a lot of driving days in a row and it's really hot out where I'm doing a lot of powering of the cooler, then it does still go down and charge faster than it charges up. But if I'm driving four to six hours a day, this gives very adequate power supply. And the Jackery, without getting charged, will power my cooler for about three days in a row. So if you're looking for a simple solution for weekend trips, you are more than good with using a recharge system like this. You'll get it charged well on the way out, and it'll charge on all your drives. For four to five days, you can keep a cooler really well charged, even if you're just doing one to two hour drives a day to hiking trails or things like that. If you're looking to spend a month on the road, you may need to upgrade your charging system a little bit, um, whether that's bringing it into a hotel to charge it or considering doing some solar panels. And I am still considering putting some really lightweight solar panels up on the top of my truck camper. I think it'd be fantastic to charge it that way when you're somewhere warm and sunny like Utah. And it does charge faster with the solar panels. Jackery says that with two solar panels on it, it'll charge in about eight hours which is significantly better than the 14 hours it takes with the cigarette outlet, 12 volt outlet. Um, and just for comparison's sake, it takes about seven hours for it to charge from the wall outlet. So it would have been the most ideal if the Toyota Tacoma could give me the 400 watts while I was driving. Um, that would have been the fastest way to charge up the Jackery Explorer. But at this point, it takes about 14 hours to go from zero to 100, but I rarely have it at zero. I will lose about 30% of the Jackery Explorer on a normal day charging just the cooler. And right now I'm using a Bouge RV electric cooler. I do have the full review for that on the channel as well if you're interested, but it takes about 30% per day for that. So if I drive a little bit, I'll get you know 10 to 15% back. If I'm driving for a four or five hour day, I will get at least 30% back. And so I keep a pretty good balance by just charging the Jackery Explorer that way. And then also that Jackery Explorer can recharge my phone. It can 
run a little tiny mini space heater if it's really cold. Uh, it, pro it provides a lot of good power. If you're interested in just the Jackery Explorer review itself, that is a separate video, but I just wanted to show my simple under $10 solution to getting power to the back of my Toyota Tacoma. It's a 12 volt extension cord, run through the wheel well, all the way into the back of the truck, zip tied to the bottom, and so far, it's working great. I know there are many people on the internet who have posted much more extensive fixes for their power supplies for their DIY truck campers. And so if you're looking for like a full electricity setup that'll keep you boondocking for weeks, go check some of those out. But if you're looking for a cheap, easy solution to get you through a long weekend, this is a really cheap and easy fix. 12 volt extension cord, under $10, ordered off of Amazon. You can get them other places. Thread it through and that Jackery will charge. Thanks for watching and let me know your favorite power solutions in the comments below. And since I'm looking at some solar panels right now, let me know if you have a favorite brand. I'm really curious if you found one that you think works better than others, one that's maybe more lightweight than others. I need mine to be pretty lightweight to put it up on the roof or I might have to change the strength of my struts. But for now, if I can find something really lightweight, I'd love to. So if you have a brand you love, drop it in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know what you think. Thanks for watching.